Corinne, as you're leaving the platform, would you just distribute those on this side of the St. Frey? And if you would do the same on the other side of the St. Frey, I'm going grab a name tag uh, to put on. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But things are for you to wear. Something I've got my hand on already. All right. I need to ask, is there anybody with us in the parking lot today? All right, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. And uh, we might even get a name tag out to you. Um, we'll, we'll see how that works. Well, welcome. Good to have you inside and out. Let's lift our Bibles and make this declaration. This is the Bible. It is the Word of God. It's true, and I believe it. This book is filled with hope and promise for my life now and for eternity. I'm ready to receive, ready to receive what, God what God has for me from his word, from his word. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm turn to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, one of the letters that Paul wrote, uh, which, you know, if you're in the New Testament, that's kind of an easy statement to make because he wrote half the New Testament. Uh, Philippians is... A book he writes to believers, and the theme, a theme, that runs throughout uh, the book is joy. Joy. Rejoice, joyful, joy. We track that word, and it shows up a lot in this book. I'm going to start reading in verse uh, 3 of chapter 1 of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, starting at verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul is looking at these people, is thinking about these people, and it just makes him happy. It just lifts him up because here are people who not only received the gospel, but they responded by accepting it wholeheartedly and then helping to spread it, supporting his ministry, but then being active in declaring the gospel where they were at. And then he says in verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And there we have it again. Jesus is coming back. God's at work until Jesus comes back. He's coming back. And that is highlighted over and over in the New Testament. Jesus is coming back. And God's at work until that time. It's not like, well, when Jesus comes back, then we'll see some activity again. No. There's something that God's doing until Jesus comes back. And we look forward to that. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, and he just talked about, I thank God when I remember you. Because in partnership, there's a good work going on in the Philippines. There are things that are going on right now, as he's writing, right now, that is the mark of God in their life. And he's confident it's just the beginning. It's not the completed work. It's just the start of something that God will continue on until Jesus comes back. We'll carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Okay, I gave you a serious... Everybody in the sense got one by now. P V P G I F W M Y. And you're asking, what language is that? Well, it's English, but it's an acronym, and we'll, we'll talk more about it later, but I want to make sure uh, you get it in the back of your mind. I know, I just brought it up to the front of your mind, but put it in the back of your mind again, right? <clears throat> the outline in the bulletin, if you're following along there, we are all in process. We are all in process. None of us have arrived yet. None of us are a finished product of what God is doing. We're all a work in progress. And as you look around the room, you might say there's a lot of progress needed in some places. Well, if I look in the mirror, I say there's a lot of progress. We're all in process. God is working in us and through us. None of us are completed yet. Jesus invited us to follow him, and we're on a journey. In Luke 
Part 3 is to take it across daily. Daily. It's a process. It's not just a, okay, I made a decision to follow Jesus. Yes, I asked Jesus to be my Savior and Lord. It's not just, I can look back to, and I can look back to, a date when I remember saying specifically, Jesus, I'm a sinner, you're the Savior. Would you forgive my sins? I have that date. That's my spiritual birthday. I have a spiritual birthday, of course. And uh, we, we saw we saw that with you. Fireworks and the whole thing. I love that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have a time where we get started with Jesus. But it was just a start. It wasn't the whole story. It was just a start. We're all in process. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. He, he not only gets us started, but he helps to bring it to completion, to perfection. Hebrews 10, 14 says that we are being made holy. Yes, he saved us, and as far as heaven is concerned, we are right with God, and we are ready for heaven, but we continue to be being made holy. It's a process. We're all in process. Lots of references in the New Testament to maturing, growing up. Peter says it this way, 1 Peter 2, 2, grow up in your salvation. I had an older brother. I still have an older brother. I still have several older brothers. Got them all, in fact. Uh, my oldest brother, when I was young, uh, that was one of the favorite phrases for a while. Oh, grow up. Oh, grow up. Oh, Give me time. Give me time. Oh, grow up. He would use that phrase, grow up. Peter uses that phrase. The first time I read that, I thought, I hear echoes of my older brother. Grow up. Grow up in salvation. There is a maturing process. Yes, we get saved. But we continue to mature and grow, become stronger in faith, more confident of who God is and how He's working in our lives. So Peter gives that encouragement. Grow up your salvation. Continue on. Don't stagnate. Don't stay in the heights here in the river. Move forward. Grow up in your salvation. Trust God more and become more conformed to His image. Second Peter three eighteen, he says that we are in the process of growing in grace and knowledge. We grow in grace and knowledge. I know a lot more now than I did when I first got saved. I, I think I have a better understanding of grace now than when I first got saved. I think I have a better understanding of how to exercise grace now than when I first got saved. I call people more than me. It's a lot less now than when I first got saved because I know a lot of grace. But I've got some room to grow because I'm still calling people more than me sometimes. <laughs> but really, only the more than idiots I'm calling them. Right <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> grow in grace and knowledge. In 2 Thessalonians 1 3, he commands Paul writes to the believers in Thessalonica and commands them, Your faith is growing more and more. He gave them the gospel. They believed. He had to leave town. We know the story. He's only there for three weeks. But he writes back to them and says, I'm here to report And your faith is growing more and more. You didn't just stay where you started. You're continuing on the path. You're growing. We're all in process. We are all in process. He says the same thing to the believers in uh, Corinth. 2 Corinthians 10, 15, as your faith continues to grow. That's his expectation. That's, that's the measure, the report he's getting back, and that's his expectation. Your faith will continue to grow. He's not chastising them saying, well, you're still not there, but I'm waiting. No, it's not like that. He's showing them on. Yes, you believe in God better and more and stronger. Your faith continues to grow. We're all in process. Let's not stagnate in our faith. Let's not stall out in our forward progress with God. Let's continue to grow. We are all in the process. The work that he began, I'm confident of this, he says in Philippians 1 6, that he who began a good work will carry it on to completion. 
second point here. It is God who is at work in you. In you. God is the one at work in you. God is the one at work in you. Yes, we're cooperating with him. We have our role to play. But God's the one who started the work, and he's continuing to work. I am so glad when we receive the gospel, we're not told, here's the standard, here's the goal, Good luck reaching it because it's pretty impossible. You're on your own. No, we're not on our own. Here's the goal that God has for you, and God's here to help you get there. God's here to work with you in all. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy, uh, heavy burden and, and weary, and take on my yoke. He works alongside us, He partners with us, and He is on the path and at work in us. It is God who began the work and he continues it in us. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Sometimes as we're maturing, as we're going along, we see something and we realize this is what God wanted to do. This is what would please God and see something and we, we know whether it's doing a good deal for somebody, helping them all along the way, cheering somebody on, bringing the gospel to somebody, whatever it might be, when we realize this is in God's plan, sometimes we get the idea of, man, I get this thing now. We pat ourselves on the back, we cheer ourselves on. We can celebrate our growth and our maturity, but we realize those good ideas are God's ideas. The good news is we're tuning our ear to hear his voice better. And responding, we're tuning our heart to respond to him more. And so while we can celebrate our forward progress, it is God at work in us and we're cooperating with him. It's a joint venture. God won't do what he calls us to do. God doesn't call us to do what we can't do except for with him. He calls us to do the things that he empowers us to do. We are his workmanship. Ephesians 4.10 says, We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He worked on us, he's working in us, he's working through us. We are his handiwork. He's working in us. Praise God. I am so grateful. I don't have to do all the work myself. God's at work in me. He's at work in my head, in my mind, getting me thinking right now. He gives me a lot of help. He gives me an instruction manual. He gives me guidance from his word so I can know him and know his ways. He gives me his Holy Spirit to change my heart, to soften my heart, to illuminate things that are out of place and need to be corrected in my life. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come to convict us of sin and of righteousness. What's right and what's wrong. To get us on the, on the path, to help us move forward. It is God at work in us. God is the one who's working in us. We cooperate. We, we have a role to play, but, but really God's doing the bulk of the work. And thirdly, he's not done with you yet. He, he's not done. I know there are sometimes when I think God looks at me and goes, I am done. Not because I've reached completion. I am done. But he doesn't throw in the towel on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, okay, we've got more work to do. And he continues to work. He continues to work. I know I've looked at people and I've thought, I am done with that guy. I am done. Not because they had reached completion. But I had reached the end of my rope. God doesn't reach the end of his rope with us. That's good news. That is such good news. He is not done with us. Not done. My first year uh, as an associate pastor over in Sweden, 
1987, I attended a minister's conference where the old guy, he was an old guy, he spoke. Uh, uh, I mean, he'd been around for a long time. He's a very viable ecologist. He, uh, he'd been around for a long time. And the leader of the assemblies, uh, he traveled with the apostle Paul. He was an old guy, right? <coughs> And he says at the beginning, his opening remarks at the beginning of the conference was, I've been writing some things about prayer this year. And as a young man, I was 27, 28 at the time, I thought, wait, wait a minute. You, you're learning stuff this year? I'm never going to get there. I mean, he was 50 years ahead of me. He was 50 years down the road. And I thought, I am never going to get there. And I was kind of discouraged that his opening remarks. But the more I listened to him, the longer he talked, the better understanding I have, I had of what he was saying. That God was still fresh and alive in his life. And his walk with Christ was continuing to grow and mature. And that he was never going to exhaust all of what God had for him in his life. God wasn't done with him yet. And he was learning some new things. And then I was excited. By the end of the conference, I thought, wow, I am never going to exhaust what God has for me. I'm not going to reach your know, saturation point and go, okay, I've got enough of that. Now what else can I need? I'm going to fly because uh, I've got all the God I need. No, I'm never going to reach the point where I've got all the God I need. God still has more. God still has more. He's not done. He's not done in us. He's not done with us. He's working toward completion. I like jobs where it's easy to tell when you're done. Mowing the lawn is one of those jobs. You can tell when you're done. You can tell how far you are all the way. Painting a wall. I don't really like painting. These like painting. I don't really like painting. But you can tell where you are in the process, right? You know, you're about three-fourths of the way into the process and you're ready to start painting. I hate all the crap for painting. It seems like forever you're putting tape down on that. Of course, I got a cousin who's a painter. He goes, tape? Who uses tape? Me? And he doesn't stop. Uh, well, you don't know, use tape, and you can agree with it. But I have to, all the prep, all the stuff. God's working towards completion. <coughs> and when I think of all the prep work God has had to do in my life, I am so glad he didn't give up. And he's not done yet. He's still paying. I like jobs where you can tell when you're done. God's not done yet. And as long as we're breathing, he's not done with us yet. I'm a firm believer. If you, if you ain't dead, you ain't done. Now, I know I've announced my retirement. I'm going to be done as pastor of the Son of God. God. But I'm not done with God. And I'm not done with ministry. I just don't know really what it's going to look like after this month. I, I've got a friend who's retired and it's oh, oh, you'll love retirement. God will his ministry unchanged. Uh, unchained. It, uh, opportunities will come to you, and it'll just be fun. It'll just be fun. Oh, well, fantastic. Right? Great. And I really don't know what it looks like, but I've been given some great encouragement, and, uh, and I like that. But God's not done with me. I'm not done with God. You're not done with God. God's not done with you. God's not done. Working toward completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Jesus is coming back. And until he does, we are in process. And God is at work in us. So let us keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Galatians 5.25 Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We say we are spiritual believers. And that's true. That means we're actively pursuing His lead. We're staying in step with the Spirit. And that staying in step, sometimes, I, when I first read that, I remember thinking, I'm staying in step, keep up, keep up. You don't, don't fall behind. You gotta stay up with those. Keep up. But I've learned that sometimes it means, and don't run ahead. 
don't run ahead of the Holy Spirit. And, and that might sound ironic. How could I possibly get ahead of the Holy Spirit? I'm having a hard time keeping up. <clears throat> don't wander off to the side. That one I understand. That's easy. All right. <coughs> easy to understand. understand. Don't wander off to the side. Stay in step. When I was in high school and was a cross-country runner, there were times when our coach ran with us. Now, I look back now and realize how much of a young man he was. And at the time, he was an old guy. He was probably in his, I bet he was almost 35. Uh, so, as a kid, he was an old guy. But he would run with us to teach us pacing. Instead of sprinting and jogging and sprinting and jogging, teach us pace. I just tried, and he would... He would set a pace. I didn't learn until after I finished school that he had been a phenomenal runner as a kid, had set some state records, had done some. He was just, he never talked about that. He was just concerned about getting us to do it right. And I remember him setting the pace and saying, okay, now this is the pace for a such and such a time for your three mile race. And he'd set that pace. He said, now, if you keep this pace for three miles, this is the time we'll end up with. And I remember early in practice going, why are we running so slow? Because this is a pace you can maintain for three miles. I was one of those guys who needed to be paced. Because I would sprint to begin with. <laughs> you know, that's good for 150 yards, which means you have 2.9 miles to go, <clears throat> and you're gasping for air. Pacing. Stay in step with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we'll spread out ahead. And God says, that's not the pace I have for you. You're going to burn out at that pace. Now, I've had people tell me, well, I'd rather burn out than rust out. You know what? Those aren't the only two options. We can stay in step with the Holy Spirit and complete the race in a timely manner. Let's stay in step with the Holy Spirit. He's working on us. And sometimes we look at somebody else and we're thinking, why are they lagging behind? If they're staying in pace in step with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit is guiding them, then don't mess with it. If they're wandering away from the Spirit, then encourage your brother or sister and help them get back in step with the Holy Spirit. If they're running ahead, and it's not the case the Holy Spirit is set for them, then hopefully they will hear the voice of the Spirit calling them back and say, okay, I, I've seen people who sprinted in ministry and then got burned, burned out, and then got rested, and then went off to another sprint, and that didn't work out so well. And they took some time to recover, and then they sprinted again, and that didn't work out so well. And if they had just Follow the pace the Holy Spirit was giving them. I think they'd have been more fulfilled and more productive for the kingdom. Let's keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Let's keep in step with the Holy Spirit. I gave you name tags. PBP, GIF, WMY. I was at a conference once with the all buttons. <coughs> They didn't spend the money on buttons, making buttons. <laughs> so I printed these up because it's cheap. Because I'm cheap. All right. All of it. <clears throat> PBP, GIF, WMY. Stands for this. Please be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. Please be patient. God isn't finished. I'm a work in process. You're a work in process. God's at work in us. And so when people are disappointed with us, and they will be, let's grow in grace and knowledge. Let's extend grace and encourage them to receive the grace of God. Hey, look, I don't represent God as well as I should yet, but please be patient. It's not a with me yet. And let's help each other to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. Let's encourage each other to trust Jesus more and more every day. Because I am confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will 
will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians, even in this Bible, which I've only had for a few years now, Philippians is, has been through the years in various Bibles that I've had, the most underlined book in my Bible. It's just so rich with joy and grace. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I love this passage because that is my confidence for each one of us. Jesus is coming back, and until then, God is at work in you. He began a good work in you. As I look around the room, I see people who have had deep faith, people who have said yes to Jesus, people who have walk with him through difficult times and through high times, joyous times. And you know what God's voice is like and what God's hand is like in your life. Others who are young in their walk and have yet to experience some of the extremes, both highs and lows, in their walk with the Lord. But know this, God is with you, God is for you. He is at work in you. And he will continue to be at work in each of us until the trumpet sounds or until our last breath. God is at work. That's a good thing. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being the God who is at work in us. You are good. And what you do is good. And we are your handiwork, which you are shaping and crafting to extend your grace, your presence throughout the world. We want to do the works which you have prepared in advance for us to do. We want to reflect your glory and extend your grace wherever we are. Thank you, Jesus, for being at work in us. And while we're in an attitude of prayer, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you're here this morning, and you haven't begun to let God work in your life. You haven't given him room to make the alterations that he wants to make to improve our lives. You haven't asked him that first initial step of saying, will you forgive me of my sin and accept me into your family? If that's you this morning, then today can be the day of salvation. Today can be the starting point where God is at work in you, creating you to be something fantastic for his glory and for your benefit. If that's you, then simply where you are, if you're ready to say yes to Jesus, then it's pretty straightforward. Silently where you're sitting, just ask God, will you forgive me? I know I've messed up. I know I've done wrong. Will you forgive me? And will you accept me as your child? Make me part of your family? Lord, I want to be at peace with you. I want to be right with you. And I know I can't get there on my own. I need you to forgive me. And I'm asking for that. Believing that that's why Jesus came to earth and died on a cross was so that I could be forgiven and brought into the family of God. If that's your prayer, your desire, and you've just prayed that, in this private moment, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you raise your hand and look my way because I'm going to be praying for you this week. As God begins the work in you that he's been eager to get started on. If that's you, Raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Well, most of us have made that decision. But perhaps today the Holy Spirit has been speaking to your heart and saying, okay, it's time to take the next step. You've been growing. You've done some things. But here's an area that I want to help you grow further in. Let's take the next step together. And if the Holy Spirit has 
convicted you of an issue of an area of your life that is always a step with him. And then simply silently where you're sitting. Say, Lord, forgive me for lagging behind or running ahead or getting out of step one way or another. Help me, Lord, to hear your voice and follow the pulse of your being in this area. Thank you, Lord, that you give us grace. You don't throw in the towel on us. You continue to work in us and through us for your glory, for our benefit, and so that the world will know that you are God and you are good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. As the weather is getting warmer and nicer, more of us are walking some, maybe you're walking in the neighborhood. We gave these uh, little yellow cards out at the Thursday National Day of Car Carving in Township Lawn. Uh, we used these several years ago when we were doing some car walks uh, throughout the summer. It's a little acronym, BLESS. How to pray for your neighbors? How to pray for your neighborhood? How to pray for that house down the street as you walk by it <clears throat> instead of just noticing how nice the garden is or how much the garden needs to be cared for or whatever you're noticing about that place? To pray a blessing. B stands for body, for the physical health. L for labor, work, employment, and provision. E for their emotions, that they might have peace and joy. S, uh, social, the relationships in home and beyond. And the second S, the spiritual, for their salvation. Maybe walking by a house, you don't know that. The condition of where is living there. Here's a simple way to be praying for them as you're walking. Let's do some prayer walking. Let's... Let's cast a net of prayer over our community. And, <clears throat> all right, I say prayer walking. Some of you are more given to get on the motorcycle and just riding these days. You can pray this on the motorcycle, too. Uh, however, however you would uh, get yourself around. Let's pray for those around us. Whether we know them, whether we're ever face to face with them or not, let's cast a net of God's grace in prayer. Now let's stand together, shall we? <clears throat> Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Spirit. God bless. Have a great day.